welcome back so in the previous video we have seen that uh, how do we create a pagination in the search container now we are going to look into how we can put a url on this row so that uh, we can perform some action what we can do is uh, we can create put a normal href over here on click of that this create employee would be open up in edit mode so let's start with that so first thing that we are going to do is let's start with putting up a, a new column and to do that uh, we will just use text and we have this then uh, what we'll do is we will create a render url okay since we want to open up a jsp and we are not uh, going to perform any action we can utilize the same thing uh, which we have created earlier like we can utilize this url but uh, we will have to change this uh, variable name so i'll just name it edit render and mvc command name is gonna be create edit and let's put up a param over here which is gonna be like employee id so how do we get that so the value would be something like this dollar and entry dot employee id validate it with your service dot xml that whatever you are putting over here is correct or not so we have employee id i'll just put that one over here so now what we have done essentially over here is that we are saying that with every search container row we want to add a new column which is gonna say that um, uh, create a URL with this name and also we are gonna put this one in a nice href then we are gonna put up something like this okay so that would be like this now edit render which is gonna be name of that and um, we can put it like this we'll close it and we'll say edit apart from this uh, let's put up a name over here um, so that uh, we will start seeing a name on the top of the column so let's name it like action um, okay action now uh, once we have named it now just save it and let's see how it comes up in the in the search container so we'll just wait uh, for it to get published all right so it's published and i'm just gonna go back in and refresh my page so as soon as I refresh you will see like we have a new column known as action and in that action we have a uh, hyperlink uh, corresponding to each and every row so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna copy one of the link and put it up in a notepad so you'll see like uh, the parameter over here has been added with the value like 103 now uh, if I copy another one you will see like uh, again uh, the id is going to change so id is 107 now what essentially what we want to do is we want to open up the create employee screen with edit mode so that uh, we can edit this and save this out so to do that um, what we will have to do is we'll have to go up into our edit render mvc command and put something over here so the first thing that we need to do is we need to catch the uh, catch that parameter which is like um, the id so i'll write parameter dot cat parameter right, a typo dot get um it's an integer we'll just quickly validate 
it's a long type so we'll just put up a long get long and the request would be render request and the parameter name would be which we are going to copy from view.jsp so we have named is that employee id so i'll just go in and put employee id and i'm just going to assign this variable to new variable which is going to be named as employee id one thing what we can do is uh, we can put a default value over here okay so uh, this particular method is parameterized to take a default value so uh, what we can do is uh, we can put a default value which is zero now <clears throat> what we are going to say is if employee id is greater than zero then only we want to do some stuff which is like um uh, pull the employee details from the database and then uh, send it to the JSP so that we can read the values and show it to the users again similarly we'll just uh, utilize the employee service and we are going to put that one over here we have employee service reference and we'll just do it like this employee service dot get employee okay we will have to update our service because this particular method is not yet exposed okay so again what we'll do is we'll go back to employee service and we'll update our method so in the impl i'll go to employee service impl i'll copy this method and just return it get employee by id and i'll take along employee id since i have that get employee via the employee id and it's gonna be returning me the employee so we'll put up the throws declaration so that if this is not uh, employee is not found we are going to get a exception which is going to tell us that this particular employee is not found now again uh, the same step has to be done by us which is like we will build the service and once the service is built we will deploy this So we'll just wait. So now my service is built. Uh, it took uh, like 13 seconds. And now I'm gonna do is I'm gonna build these two jars so that everything is up to date. So you see like uh, my uh, both of the jars are built now what I have to do is I'll have to remove these since I have rebuilt the service it normally uh, it doesn't require you to do that but uh, on a safer side because uh, there might be old instance of these uh, two projects setting up over there so it sometimes fails to start those services so it's good that uh, you delete the existing services which you, which we have over here and we can start like this so i'll just drag and drop both of the projects now and wait for it to get published So our API is started. Okay, so we have this issue. Now, uh, earlier also we had faced this issue. Uh, in that case, I had to remove everything and then uh, restart from scratch so now my whole uh, projects which are like uh, these three uh, web and uh, services and api they all are removed now so one by one i'm gonna keep, uh, start and 
uh, deploy them. Okay, my services are also started. Now I'm going to deploy my web. So before deploying my web, let's uh, do some stuff over here. Now let's see if the variable uh, method is available. Get employee by ID. Uh, it's not. So I'll just do a Gradle refresh. All right. Now let's validate if it is available. Get employee by ID, employee ID, and that's it. So I have uh, this particular uh, thing available. Now, uh, again, like uh, it's a basic uh, thing to put it into try catch because we threw uh, this particular exception from the employee service IMPL. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it as it is into render response. Okay. So I'll just put it request dot set attribute and the name would be employee and the stuff would be something like this. So now uh, if employee ID is greater than zero, then uh, we would be able to kind of uh, get this element from the database and we would be able to push it. So that's how you normally um, uh, send an object to the JSP. I'll just save it. And then let's go back to our view.jsp. Since uh, we are editing it, let's go to edit.jsp. And over here we will see like we have a form. In the form we have a couple of details. 